Hello and welcome to the Ask Assad Show. I'm Michael Gaines and glad you're joining us today as we continue our conversation, bringing you insight out and giving you perspective and analysis from markets and market leaders around the world. So thanks for joining us today. Before we dive into our guest, uh, we want to go ahead and give you an opportunity to uh, be a part of today's show as well and uh, give you uh, the chance to have your questions and comments uh, be a part of the show. So to tell us how you can do that, we'll bring in uh, NOV's uh, social media extraordinaire, Shelby Dumain. So hey, Shelby, good to see you. Hey, Michael, it's great to see you as well. I I'm really excited to be here. It's bright and early for us here in Houston, Texas, but um, I'm really excited to both uh, Assad and our guest. Um, it it's, it's a little bit later in, in their day. <laughs> Um, so I'm glad that we were able to, to join the call with them. Um, but if you're watching at home, whatever time zone you're in and wherever in the world you're uh, located at right now, if you want to join the show, uh, the best way to do that is by commenting below. So if you have any questions uh, for our guests or for Assad, or I always say this, even for Michael, um, you can comment those down below. And I'm there in the comment section throughout the entire show. Um, so you know, during the conversation, if we see a, a question um, about what we're talking about, or even at the end, we're going to do a, a Q and A there as well. Uh, so, at any point, you can go ahead and comment below. Um, a few other ways you can reach us is you can actually email us at askassad at nov.com. It's there on the screen now, and you can also uh, give us a phone call. So, I always talk about this being my favorite method. You can call and leave a voicemail. You can stay anonymous or you can let us know maybe your name and, and, and where you work or where you're from. And that number is um, country code plus one three four six two two three four seven nine nine. So we would absolutely love to hear from you um, at any time after the show, um, but especially during the show. Like I said, if you have a comment, go ahead and leave it below and we're going to get to as many of those questions and comments as we can. All right. Thanks, Shelby. I really appreciate it. All right. So uh, in today's show, we, of course, uh, couldn't have uh, the show without uh, NOV's, uh, what we like to say is a, the guy that we go to for our business questions. And that's Asad Mahana, Director of Business Strategy here at NOV. So Asad, uh, good to see you. Good to see you too, Michael. Uh, and uh, good to see you, Shelby. Thanks for uh, for waking up so early. I know it's pretty uh, bright and early uh, in Houston. It's around noon time here in beirut so uh, excited to to be talking about the middle east again here yeah absolutely i know that's been a, an area of focus for us for uh, the last several weeks and uh of course we're we're excited to continue that conversation uh with our guest today uh before we do that just want to briefly dive in i know uh even though you're uh, you're you're out out in, in lebanon enjoying a, a, a looks like a little bit of a mix of uh, family and work uh, yep. But but while uh, while you're there, I know that your ear is is to the ground and certainly uh, keeping track of some movement going on. Uh, wanted to maybe just briefly talk uh, and and lead off by having you give some perspective on uh, the recent news out of uh, Exxon Mobil, and I think they had some uh, some some developments there. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, you, you know, Michael, we like to keep a pulse on, on what's going on with uh, market trends and, and market analysis. And uh, we've, uh, it, well, the industry really has long awaited for Exxon to come out and, and make its own pledge for, for the energy transition. It's been criticized in the past for not uh, getting on board with all the initiatives around um, uh, gas emissions in the uh, uh in, in this transition towards cleaner uh, or greener energy but it finally has exxon announced on monday that it will in fact um reduce its green greenhouse gas emissions by mid-decade uh by up to 15 to 20 percent uh, of its uh operated uh activity so not quite getting to net zero just yet um, although uh, a lot of the uh, invest is investment community has been enticing Exxon to make that move, uh, but it has in indeed uh, made a bit more than it has in the past, a bit more on the flaring pledge that it made uh, a couple of years ago, uh, but now saying that it will indeed uh, reduce emissions 
intensity, not the absolute emissions. So there's a little bit of uh, uncertainty there into what the real target is. So the intensity of its operated upstream oil and gas facilities. So really uh, anything that's non-operated, Exxon's not addressing those. Uh, anything that's uh, really measurable in the public's uh, perspective uh, is also not entirely clear. So we'll see what happens. But that's that's a good indication uh, of of Exxon actually making that that pledge beyond the flaring and and methane only targets that it made uh, earlier on in the year. Mm. So I know um, outside of that, from a, maybe a broader stance or perspective. I know there's um, a particular index that you've been uh, keeping tabs on that I think we wanted to, to introduce as maybe a, a part of the show. I think this one's great, Michael, because because uh, when we look at the economy today, a lot's changing really fast. Not any time in the, in the history of, uh, of, of the U.S. economy or the world economy have we seen something like, uh, or in recent history, at least something like COVID-19 destabilize all the markets. So keeping an eye in real time is quite important. What economists have done in the past is keep an eye on unemployment rates to see how the economy is doing. GDP has been another one. But I think introducing this one, what we uh, are bringing in as the weekly economic index, the WEI, and it's made or created by the uh, Federal Bank of New York is, a, is, a, is the closest that it could be to um, real time. GDP, unemployment always have a lag. They're more quarterly measurements. This one's weekly. In fact, it comes up twice a week. And what this index, Michael, contains is six or seven different attributes that make that one index. Uh, first, it's, it's looking at same store retail sales year after year. It's looking at 9,000 different outlets in the U.S. and saying, this is what you sold up to this date that year. Here's what you're selling up to this date this year. The other, the second thing that's in this is unemployment insurance claims. Of course, when people lose their jobs, they're going to file for unemployment. So that's an immediate uh, indication of what the economy uh, or how the economy is doing. The third one I think is, is, is quite important is steel production. How much, how much steel production are we doing this week compared to last week, uh, compared to last year? Uh, the fourth is electricity consumption, which... I mean, you think about it, it's, it's um, quite indicative of the activity in, in, in plants, in, in facilities, in, in, in uh, people going back to work and turning those lights on and turning those uh, facilities and manufacturing facilities on. Um, and, and, the, and the last one is fuel sales, which I think is extremely indicative of uh, people actually going back on the streets, consuming oil. Um, so, so, so I think it's a powerful index to keep an eye on. Um, U.S. activity, but we know that uh, 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 it being what it is, quite indicative of uh, what mm -hmm. world activity could also be. So, so that slide we're looking at, you could see on the very uh, left of that, uh, we see the the Great Recession in 2008, the financial crash, uh, the the dip quite clear, and and what we're seeing today with the WEI uh, ahead of GDP. Uh, somewhat recovering uh, at, this, at a slower pace, but uh, uh, assuring that economy is on the right track. Well, it's certainly uh, I, for those that, uh, like yourself, certainly not me, but I know folks like yourself who are looking at these charts all the time saying uh, the, the letter of the alphabet that I wanted to see, uh, I'm kind of seeing on the on the right. So that V V shape recovery, of course, the yeah. The, the slope of that recovery course is the, the main question and certainly seeing more on that, that x-axis. But uh, from what we can see so far, certainly, I mean, some signs at least to indicate that the, uh, at least the worst is, is behind us in, in this regard. So hopefully we continue that, that uh, what do they say, up and to the right. And certainly not not an indication of of COVID, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we know that's still not resolved worldwide. We know right. vaccines are coming. But but definitely an indication of where the economy is heading. So yes, you're right. It's, right. it's great to see the that swish right there. Good. Well, uh, wanted to go ahead and introduce uh, Assad, our our guest. So uh, today we have the the pleasure of having uh, Ibrahim Al Alawi, who uh, is going to be joining us today. Uh, he holds a degree in petroleum engineering from the University of 
Louisiana at Lafayette and worked uh, 15 years in various positions uh, within the drilling division of uh, Abu Dhabi uh, company for off, uh, excuse me, onshore oil operations at Co. before joining Al Mansouri as business development manager in 2004. Uh, then he spent uh, a couple of years um, as manager in North Africa based in Tripoli, Libya, before returning to Abu Dhabi to become the chief operating officer. So uh, Mr. Al Alawi's uh, current position is deputy chief executive officer with uh, Al, uh, Al Mansouri. So uh, thank you uh, for joining us today. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Assad. Great, Good to great see you guys smiling. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Uh, we're going to end this year with with lots of smiles, at least around these parts. So certainly I uh, glad, so. glad to see yours as well. Great to have you on the show, uh, Ibrahim, and and and, uh, and welcome on. First, I want to I want to say thank you for for your partnership. I know uh, NOV and Al Mansouri uh, have have done uh, one of the more most successful JVs um, and and uh, in supporting uh, our customers in Abu Dhabi. So I appreciate all of that uh, back there and and being on the show. Uh, I want to I want to start off. Uh, maybe for those that, that don't know Al Mansouri, uh, maybe if you can give us a little bit of uh, an idea of, of what, what you guys do. Yes, we're a uh, service company, so we're, we're one of your uh, customers. Uh, we compete with uh, the likes of Halliburton, Schlumberger, Weatherford, uh, and a whole host of local uh, companies. Uh, we were established in 1977. Uh, we started as a slick line and if maybe you're not old enough to recall but in those days there was a another boom in the industry and al mansuri rode that wave uh, and expanded very rapidly um, and then that was followed by the crash of 86 87 uh, which was an eye-opener for the company uh, but it taught the company how to be uh, adaptive and to uh, to change as the world changes around you. And we've taken that into our DNA and uh, we've succeeded for over 40 years and uh, hopefully we'll continue for another 40 years uh, moving along well with the rest of the industry. That's great. And, and if I'm, if I'm uh, also uh, well, well uh, versed on activity, you're not only in the Middle East, you've recently expanded into over 20 countries, is that right? Uh, we did get up to over 20 countries, uh, but in the last couple of years, since the, uh, the the last drop of oil prices in 2015, uh, we've had to retrench a bit and, and really uh, think about what's important and where we really want to be and, uh, and what's uh, best for us in the long run. And so we've decided to focus here in the Middle East and North Africa, uh, yep. known as the MENA, MENA region. Yep. Uh, so currently we're, we're operating in about 14 countries, but uh, and, we want to be strong where we are, where we're at. And, and, I, and I think uh, Michael has a question on that later on, on, on activity, uh, but, but I want to kind of tee off on, on something that we've heard from Al Mansouri uh, and, and that's uh, company culture. Uh, I, I, I think I, I've heard a lot uh, about, employee happiness and and that as that being uh one of your one of your pillars can you can you tell us a little bit more about that yes i mean uh, most companies have hsc health safety and environment uh we added uh, quality uh, we included that in there and a few years ago we added another h uh, for happiness and uh that actually it was maybe not by design but when the company was started, it was three individuals and they took a very keen interest in the, the growth of the company. Uh, they were very much involved with the, uh, the employees and uh, they grew with the, with the employees and, and everyone kind of banded together like a family, you know, like a, a real team spirit. And I think uh, over the years as a company has grown and expanded, that has become part of our culture. We, we were always proud to say that, that we have a family culture. And part of that is uh, to 
keep the employees happy because if they're happy, then uh, they work better, they produce better, they have better ideas, they make the customers happy, and uh, and they make the uh, shareholders uh, happy too because we get better returns from happy employees. They will go that extra mile to make sure that the customer is satisfied. And so uh, we uh, we also try to keep in touch with what's happening in in the world around us. And a few years ago, there was a lot of talk about happiness and happy workforce. And so we took that on board. We, we brought in an expert in happiness um, and we did a lot of uh, study and, and learning and we decided to implement it uh, within our company to, to formalize it uh, with the appointment of a chief happiness officer back in 2017. Cool. And uh, we haven't looked back, and, and we're very happy about that too. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure those types of programs. Uh, I mean, it sounds simple. You know, it's like, okay, well, just work to make your employees happy. But I know uh, there is a lot of a lot of heavy lifting going on in in the background. So, uh, so that's, that's <laughs> really. I, I, I it's it's great to hear hear that because yeah, it takes a lot of coordination and, and collaboration to. To achieve what, yeah, again, what sounds quite maybe, you know, basic almost. Yeah, it sounds easy, you know, chief happiness officer. A lot of people volunteered, <laughs> uh, but when they looked at the job description, they said, "Okay, well, let me <laughs> let me think about it." Yeah, <laughs> it is a lot of work, uh, but it's very uh, satisfying, mm. um, and and it gives you a sense of uh, achievement and and fulfillment uh, when you've made other people happy, brought joy to their lives. I, I do have a, a another question for you, but just I just want to follow up maybe just one more with that. So when you talk about you know happiness for, with with employees and and I mean what could you give us maybe an example that you you'd be comfortable sharing? I mean what what does that look like very practically? Um, well, it's uh, we actually uh, uh, make people feel uh, unashamed to come to one of our HR people, or even to our, directly to our chief happiness officer with some of their personal uh, issues mm. that are bothering them. Mm. And a lot of times we may not have the answer, but just listening to them kind of mm. helps them get it off their chest and makes them feel better afterwards. And, mm. and, and it does uh, increase their level of, of happiness. Right. Um, surprisingly, it's not Actually, money is, is the least of people's worries, believe it or not. You know, initially you think everyone wants more money, but uh, no, no. And at the end of the day, uh, happiness is, uh, is, is a, a lot, lot more to do with your own uh, feeling of, of worth and, mm. and being a contributing member of the team. Right. Um, and that's what we've learned through this uh, journey. So one uh, one other area I know that uh, is is key certainly for operators in uh, in the Middle East region is continuing to look at ways of adopting uh, digitalization, and of course that's happening all across you know across the board uh, in every aspect of of business. So as you look at uh, Al Mansouri, how how do you Continue to keep uh, keep that at the forefront of uh, of of your your strategic plans and and how you are able to uh, serve serve customers in that way. Well, there's there's two uh, two ways of looking at it. Uh, one is to react to our customers um, if they they decide to go on a higher level of technology. Uh, we we want to join them. Uh, but the other way to look at it is what's best for us. And regardless of what our customers do, uh, we see a value of, of heading in that direction ourselves. And, uh, and we just do it. Uh, a lot of the work that we do is mechanical and uh, it requires physical work out in the field. And uh, there's really not much that can be digitized, but all these supporting processes and the administration that that goes around it can be digitized and it does lead to better efficiencies. And I see a lot of, uh, of where it ties in with uh, the direction that our customers are going. For example, uh, 
invoicing and invoice processing and and issuing job tickets are all being done online nowadays and and our systems are compatible with our customers and if our customers still want to do paper based and fax based well you know we'll accommodate them uh, but we definitely see digitalization is is the way forward for us what in in so you know one of the things uh you know i'm thinking back to assad's uh, uh graph of the uh uh, uh uh, global WEI? index, WEI. Yeah, the WEI index, and so as I'm looking at that, you know, you're, we're looking at at little lines, and so of course there's the 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 dip where we are now, but uh, that that V shape holds uh, a whole year's worth of of stories and lessons learned and experiences, and uh, and, and certainly uh, a lot going on there. So, uh, you know, when we when you when we kind of look at this, and and as I start to think about you know, the challenges faced uh, with a low oil, uh, low, low price of oil in the, in the market. Uh, what have been some of those lessons learned, you know, when you kind of in retrospect, look back and say, oh, yeah, you know, our 2020, the year of, of all kinds of things. Um, you know, when you look at the low, low oil low price and, and how you and the team have been able to, to rally around that, what are some of the things that, that, uh, that you feel uh, you and others are going to be taking away from from these things? Um, I think the biggest lesson we've learned is that uh, uh, when you're coming to try to optimize uh, your efficiency of your operations uh, uh, and all the supporting processes around it, uh, there really is no end. There's always uh, ways that you can uh, do things better, smarter, uh, more cost effective. And just when you think you've, you've squeezed the most uh, blood out of the turnip, there's a few more drops left, <laughs> you find. Um, and and uh, getting your people uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, join you in this uh, really does uh, uh, come out with uh, better outcomes because the guys in the field, the, the, the women in the field or in the office, everybody uh, on the team, uh, bring something to the table that you as a manager uh, may not notice, but them that being at the cutting edge, they, they see where they can improve and where we can save. So everybody, uh, everybody has a part to play and everybody's contribution is, is valuable. And uh, you just need to give them the opportunity to have their voice heard. And uh, I think that's uh, what we're learning and we're taking it on board as we move forward. It sounds like you have a nice combination there of, of the right uh, incentive for people to come out and, and contribute in efficiency improvements and cutting costs and coming up with ideas just with, with, uh, with the fact that they're, they're comfortable, they're, they're happy, uh, and, and they bring in their best to, to work every day. Yeah, we, um, it's taken us a long time to, uh, to become a no blame culture. Over 10 years, uh, you know, culture is a very uh, slow thing to change. Uh, but I think we've gotten there. If you compare how people used to run the company, you know, 10, 12 years ago and how it's run today, uh, it's a lot more flatter structure, a lot more uh, dialogue, less shouting, less order giving and more uh, soliciting of ideas and sharing uh, thoughts and coming to a consensus that everybody buys into, um, we think that's just a better way to, to run the whole thing. Um, Ibrahim, you've, you've uh, touched a little bit on uh, the operation side and how you've taken tactics to kind of focus on what your strengths are. Um, we've seen in the Middle East a, a growing trend of um, integrated projects of integrated contracts uh, that drive behavior in a certain direction from the big companies, the local companies. Uh, local content's another big topic in the in the region that you've you've probably encountered over and over again. Uh, how, how does this play out? What's that dynamic uh, encouraging, and, and where do you see it going? 
Um, well, it's, uh, we see it a lot in the region, but I think it's a global phenomenon as the, uh, the operating companies uh, downsize as the, the older generation retires. You have uh, less intake of younger people. So uh, they have to do more with less. And uh, so they're going to outsource more and more stuff to companies like us, uh, service companies. Um, but we, uh, we're specialized in what we do. We're, we're good at services. And maybe that doesn't, doesn't mean that we're going to be good at running an oil company. Um, yeah. So there's a kind of a, a risk there for the, for the operators. Uh, but for us, it's a challenge uh, because we do want to provide them with what they're asking for. And if they want us to, uh, to bring more and more uh, functions and services on board, a company like us, we're not a big international conglomerate. Uh, so we look for partners uh, that are good at what they do, that complement us, you know, and we provide our services, which, which we're very good at. And uh, so far, we, uh, we see things uh, moving positively. Um, the challenges uh, of being successful in these kind of projects is to... Uh, to have the right partners and to be open-minded and uh, to collaborate more. So I think another thing that you're, you're going to see out of this, and I think it's already happened a little bit in North America, is that the traditional service providers are now becoming technology providers to, you know, smaller and medium-sized uh, service providers. Yep. And that could be a challenge for NOV as well, because, uh, you'll find that some of your former customers are now competing with you. Yeah, there's, there's certainly um, a trend of uh, handing over the equipment and the technology to the, to the local players. And I think a big part of that in North America, and we talked a little bit about that in, in last week's show, we had the Spears brothers, about the entrepreneurship uh, mentality of the North American activity. And that's, these small companies, the independent operators wanted to do it themselves as opposed to hire the big service companies to do it for them. So differentiation, I guess, was a big player in, in, in driving that, uh, that behavior um, towards owning equipment, owning your own RSS, for instance, and um, not hiring the, the, the service. Um, which, which kind of leads me to, uh, I guess, Al Mansouri's position itself as this, this specialized service provider. Um, how would you characterize the absence of Al Mansouri in the market? Is that, is that gap easily filled, or do you feel that differentiation through culture and expertise uh, being enough for, for where the market's going? Um, let me just understand your question. Um, is it a hypothetical? Like if, if we weren't here, how would the market look? Pretty much. That, yeah, I think what, what differentiates us from the competitors is, uh, I alluded to it earlier that, that we were f formed by uh, three individuals who, who took a very, uh, very personal interest in, in uh, helping the company grow. And uh, it, and and because of that, we've developed a culture of customer satisfaction, and um, we've even formalized it in our in-house training. Everybody goes through four different uh, uh, classes of uh, customer care uh, before they move up into the management. Uh, so it is part of our DNA is to serve and to make our customers happy, and. Uh, you know, we because we're private, I guess we have the luxury to to not be so focused on the bottom line. But we feel that if we focus on on keeping our customers happy, customer satisfaction, uh, then the bottom line will take care of itself. And so we, uh, I think that's why they always want us to come back. Uh, that's why our tagline is always Al Mansuri because we deliver to them what they expect. And uh, I think if we weren't around, uh, 
maybe they wouldn't be so satisfied. They'd get what they need, but maybe not what they want. If that makes sense. It, it does. And, and we kind of have firsthand experience with that through the NOV El Mansur JV that, uh, and, and, that, and that the experience we've, we've had with you guys is a testimony of, of what differentiate differentiates you. So, um, it, it, it does, it does make sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and I want to say, I've been looking at the comment section and it's pretty great. There's a lot of people have been saying that um, they really believe in what you're saying about employee happiness, that um, that's something that's important to them too. And I, I actually wanted to show, we got a comment from Marco in Italy and he said, improving the happiness of your employees makes your business honorable and greetings from Italy. So we definitely appreciate you coming on and, and sharing this perspective with, you know, both us on the show, but also with our followers. I know they're really appreciating that. And uh, with that, I wanted to ask um, a question. So we get a lot of comments of people looking for work and I've noticed they're either, some are starting the industry for the first time, uh, others are maybe returning to the industry. So what advice would you have for somebody that's maybe joining, especially in this kind of, uh, tricky time <laughs> for the industry? Um, what would you say to those people? I'd say, uh, you know, be humble, uh, lower your expectations. Uh, accept what comes your way and uh, make the most of it. And uh, you'll probably be surprised at how happy you end up being. You know, uh, like I said, we get a lot of satisfaction out of making our customers happy and knowing that we did the best job we could and, uh, and we succeeded and that's, that's a reward in itself. You know, it may not pay all your bills, but it certainly makes you feel good. Mm. Wow. No, that's uh, certainly some really good good advice and and uh, and great perspective uh, from um, what what sounds like a, a an amazing amazing culture. I, I'll have to uh, whenever whenever travel is is less restrictive. I, I think I'm I'm adding a, a visit to to see you. Uh, Ibrahim and, 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 and your team, because that sounds sounds really great. I appreciate you sharing that with us. Oh, we'd be happy to have you. You should. And yeah. I think it's quite timely, too. I mean, look at the mental health uh, topic that's come up all year round with people working from home and kids running around and, not you know, people losing jobs. It's just just that the addressing the, 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 the personal that uh, I think is, is, is quite timely and quite powerful. Yes, I think October 10th was uh, World Mental Health Awareness Day. And uh, we made a big thing of it in our company because as you said, it is a timely topic. And, uh, you know, we want people to, to know that they're not alone. Mm. Uh, the company does care. Uh, you're not just another number in the system. And uh, we're always there for them. If they need us, I have a I have a, one more question for you. I don't know if Shelby has has more from the from the audience, but uh, 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 energy transitions come up uh, in almost every conversation we've had as being a disruptor to how companies operate. Um, uh, where we, like, we've, we've talked earlier uh, about Exxon's new pledge. Uh, where, where, where's El Mansouri in that? Are you are you, are you having your own? Uh, where's ESG in general? Well, we are, we're very aware of these issues, uh, and uh, traditionally we've we've um, you know used had HSE objectives, uh, and environment has always been kind of the at the bottom of the uh, on the uh, HSEQ. Uh, it has been at the bottom of the list, and it's always been about uh, you know have a beach cleanup day or something like that. Uh, but this year. I mean, for next year, 2021, we've started to uh, seriously decide to look at our emissions in addition to the spills and the garbage and segregating waste, recycling, you know, that watching our electricity use, et cetera. Now we're going to look at the emissions and we're looking at technologies that we can uh, introduce in our little small footprint. You know, we're not ExxonMobil. 
but every little bit that anyone can do uh, can certainly help the environment. So we're looking at solar panels. We're looking at uh, converting uh, waste gas to uh, to uh, electricity. Um, you know, in our little uh, packages that we we run around the desert with, um, and we're just starting to look at how we can contribute to, to making this a better world to live in. No, that's, that's really great. No, I, I appreciate it. And um, yeah, again, appreciate the, like you said, the acknowledgement and recognition that, uh, you know, we're, we're all in this together. And, and so looking for, you know, increased ways of, of being more efficient and um, continuing to, essentially eat our own cooking. So in other words, you know, continuing to use innovation to, to help both this industry, but, but it's certainly uh, the global marketplace. So uh, certainly appreciate, appreciate those, those perspectives. And, and again, just looking in the comments, seeing some folks agreeing with you also again on uh, you know, the importance of, of being together and uh, the importance of mental health. And, and like you said, letting folks know in a, in a year where, We've all been probably more physically isolated than many can recall in recent history. Uh, just reminding folks that they aren't alone and that that we're that we're here for for each other. So uh, some really great great reminders. So appreciate that, uh, Ibrahim. And um, uh, I, I know that we've had some folks uh, continuing to to have some some questions uh, questions in here. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna ask Shelby. Can, She's been. Keeping, oh yeah, please go ahead, Ibrahim. I just like to uh, just to add uh, one more thing about this year. Uh, most of our employees work in the field, um, yeah. and they work a rotation schedule. Uh, you know, different business units have different uh, schedules, but uh, some unfortunately were on their uh, field breaks at home uh, when this whole COVID thing started, uh, so they were unable to come back to work. Uh, others were in the field working and uh, they've been unable to go home for like uh, seven, eight months now. Uh, but we have done our best to accommodate everybody uh, and try to make uh, things easy for them. Uh, we haven't laid anyone off due to COVID, even though we're not getting any work out of them. They're at home, but uh, they're still part of our family. And, uh, you know, we want to make sure that uh, they're okay. So I just wanted to add that. Thank That's you. really great. And and we got a question that I hadn't even thought about it kind of from the flip side. So we've talked about um, kind of kind of your the leader's philosophy and, um, you know, that kind of direction. But we got a question on uh, for, from Javid on Facebook and um, he was wanting to know what advice would you like to give um, to a sincere, a dedicated employee uh, where their company maybe doesn't focus as much on that employee happiness? What advice would you have for them? and what they can do? Uh, well, uh, I'd say that, uh, you know, happiness comes from within you. So even though you feel like your company doesn't care, but you're still dedicated, then, then I would say, uh, you know, just give it your best, uh, whatever you do um, for your own satisfaction. Uh, because at the end of the day, if you do a good job, they'll remember that you did it, not your company, you know, and you as an individual will be, will be recognized uh, for that. Um, so don't give up hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think those are great words to, no. uh, to remember for sure. Are you there? All right. So been speaking with uh, Ibrahim Al Alawi, who is uh, the deputy chief executive officer uh, 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 with uh, Al Mansouri, and uh, been having a great conversation with him, getting his insight and perspective uh, on how he leads the organization, um, some of the key items that uh, their team is focused on and uh, and understanding more about about culture. So it's really, really great. So uh, appreciate him and uh, and his time today. Aside, and, and uh, yeah, well, I think what we've heard from from Ibrahim, I guess, uh, is a is a great example of of 
how company, companies can carry themselves in the, in the, in the midst of uh, the downturn, uh, really looking at company culture, making sure that our employees are mentally healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, operational excellence is, is another thing. Be good at what you do. Um, and, and, and definitely the environment, uh, you know, do, do what you can with what's available. I think uh, Ibrahim may have dropped off, but uh, some, some great, great feedback there uh, from, oh, there he is back again. There he is, yep. Well, great. Yeah, no, I know we we're talking about digital digitization of the world, and here we are trying to trying to make it work. work. So a little bit of, of technical uh, difficulties, but yeah, as we're wrapping up, just yeah, wanted to thank you, Ibrahim, for uh, for taking the time to to share uh, your perspective and what's uh, what's going on with uh, Al Mansouri. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks. All right. Thank great you. All right, Assad. Well, I know we're wrapping up the year, and uh, we've uh, had quite quite the year of conversations and and opportunities to to uh, talk about things happening in the market overall, and uh, of course uh, the ins and outs. So, what uh, just for folks, just so they can kind of have in the back of their mind, what does the show schedule look like um, as we wrap wrap up the year? Certainly busy. Uh, like you said, it's been a it's been a busy year. I think we've topped over forty episodes on this show. Uh, you and me know very well, Michael, how this all started as a, an internal get together for our internal folks until we decided to, uh, to 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 get it out and 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 share the insight with with the community. So this is us giving giving back of some sort. Um, we've had some phenomenal, phenomenal guests over the year. Uh, Ibrahim Alewi being certainly one of them. Um, greatly appreciate uh, his presence and all the others that have come up. I think we'll have more industry leaders uh, come on the show next week, next year. We have a, 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 a more fabulous lineup uh, from uh, uh, successful service companies, drilling contractors, uh, operators from around the world will be uh, highlighting regions like we have been doing for the Middle East. We'll be talking about Latin America here soon, early in the year. We'll be hosting uh, uh, operators from different different corners from around the world as well, uh, and, and technology companies as well that can, that can bring insight to what we share. The index that I shared earlier today is another way of keeping our audience abreast of the progress of the economy and how we're heading towards recovery and what that looks like, the indications and the trends that companies are taking uh, as they get out of this recession. Hopefully, the industry will find its way out of it uh, quickly. And, 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 and like we've said in the past, hopefully, the behavior in general will be different. It's not business as usual. It's reinventing how we do business. It's a, a cleaner, uh, more efficient uh, industry that uh, I think is is headed in, in some some great days uh, going forward. So um, that on top of the name change of the show, we talked about that. Ask Assad. It'll no longer be Ask Assad. You can still ask me. Yeah, but, we uh, we we will. Don't don't worry. We'll, you can we'll ask all you want. Assad. But it'll be Insight Out, uh, which is what we do here. Great. All right. Well, with that, um, we are going to be out. Uh, so appreciated Asad joining us from uh, Lebanon. And uh, certainly a, a thanks to all of our guests for joining us wherever you have been joining us today. Uh, from all of us here at NOV, thanks for watching and for listening. And we'll talk to you again next time.